Good to go, Gordo. Thank you. Good morning, all. Well, today we're here for our 10th Town Hall Health Crisis Meeting. Um, this one, though, has been particularly important and particularly timely. And some of the allegations that are coming out of the Mackay Hospital need to be explored. Um, and they need to be pursued, and we need to put the spotlight on them because it seems to be the only time the government seems to act in the health space is when the media glare is forced upon them. And whether that's the way the exemption unit runs in Queensland or whether that's action on getting results at a hospital, it seems to be that the government's more interested in how things look than how they actually are. So today is important and we want to get justice for individuals and we want to fix a broken system. Now across Queensland We've heard stories from people who have waited for an ambulance to arrive and they've had loved ones die in their arms. We've had stories of people missing surgery multiple times, being pushed back on the morning of a surgery. Imagine how that feels. But here in Mackay, along with in Caboolture, things are at the next level. And we hear allegations of surgeries that have gone so wrong so consistently that it's turned people's lives upside down. And we owe it to those people to get justice. If there is an issue with the system, it must be fixed. And it's not a case of the hard-working staff who need to do more, it's the government that needs to set clearer pathways and empower people at the front line to get results. And throughout all of these town hall crisis meetings, it's been brave people who have patients who have suffered who have come to us, but it's also been paramedics and nurses and doctors who have reached out to us to say, they are struggling under a system that is just at breaking point. And the government needs to admit that over the course of the last seven years, they are starting to lose losing control of the Queensland health crisis. And I'm sorry, but we just can't allow coronavirus to be used as the excuse. This, this started seven years ago. Ambulance ramping was 15% in 2015. It was 29% the month before coronavirus. And today it's at 42% statewide. Elective waiting lists, surgeries have gone from 30,000 to nearly double today. That, that's, that's an issue. That's a cause for concern for every single Queenslander. And today I'm joined by the Shadow Health Spokesperson, Ros Bates, as well as both Dale and Amanda as local representatives in the area. And I'm going to hand over to Ros to say some words. The Queensland health crisis is the making of the Queensland government. Queensland. Um, health system was in crisis long before COVID. Ambulance ramping, as you have heard, um, is rife across the state. Here in Mackay, it's currently at 27 per cent. That's an increase of 6 per cent since June last year. Patients are waiting much longer on the ramp than they should be, with an average wait time of about four hours. Queensland Health is in crisis under this government, and uh, the blame needs to be laid squarely at the feet of the uh, Queensland Government. Thanks, Roz. Uh, I want to speak specifically to the issues that uh, we're experiencing and pay respect and recognition to those women that have come forward across the Mackay and Witch Sunday area. There is significant anxiety and a loss of confidence being held by expectant mothers across our region. Uh, having a baby should be a magical moment in a woman's life, and right now there is anxiety and fear uh, because of what we've seen occur across uh, the system here in Mackay. And for women living in chronic pain uh, that require gynaecological surgery, they too have a level of anxiety. And we've heard from women across Mackay and the Greater Whitsunday region that are now living with serious complications uh, because there has been a, a lack of resourcing and clearly a major issue with the Mackay Hospital Health Service. Uh, so we await the outcomes of that inquiry. But for all women across our region, they should expect a better standard of care. And that is what we will continue to fight for and call on uh, the Queensland Government to ensure that women across our region and expectant mothers receive the standard of care uh, that they rightly deserve. There's two points that I want to make today. The first point that I would make is that whilst we're having this town hall meeting here in Mackay to talk about the health issues in this particular area, I want to highlight the rural doctor crisis which is gripping Queensland and particularly areas in my electorate like Clermont, Dysart, Collinsville where we've been 
screaming for doctors for several years now. So this health crisis goes a lot further than Mackay or Caboolture or Harvey Bay. It goes the length and breadth of Queensland. The second point that I want to make is the Premier stood up yesterday and talked about her concerns with vaccination levels in Indigenous communities. And I'll give you an example. 36 per cent on Palm Island, just off the coast of Townsville. Clearly, this government's dropped the ball when it comes to vaccinations in Indigenous communities in Queensland, and that should now be ringing alarm bells, given the approaching opening of the borders in this state. If COVID was to get a hold in some of those communities, it would be absolutely devastating. And I think they're now playing a desperate game of catch-up, and they certainly need to be doing everything they can to get those vaccination levels up in those communities across Queensland. I might make one more point just on um, vaccination rates and uh, I welcome the Premier being here today and, and that's, that's great and we've been doing it for months, we've been going around. Uh, the fact that the Premier and the Ministers are on a regional blitz, we find that refreshing and we welcome it. Uh, but we've got to call a spade a spade as well and the State Government has been undermining confidence in the vaccine from the get-go and the only way this mad scramble is going to work is if the government chooses a pathway that selects hope over fear. That's the sort of pathway out of the pandemic that we've been pushing. Not a scare campaign, hope over fear. That's the way that Queensland is going to roll up their sleeves. Over to you. David, this morning's government put out a press release about your health quote from Ross Bates about the censorship of um, that uh, branch union. Pretty sad, pretty sad when a city that's in the middle of a health crisis, the government's only response is to try and play silly political games. Ros Bates was the first person in the parliament to get vaccinated. I've lost count of the amount of times that Ros Bates has told people to get vaccinated. She'll do it again if you want. Um, just on the, this nonsense about um, unions and different unions, for some reason the, the government feels obsessed about um, people's membership of, of a union that doesn't align with the traditional Labor Party. Um, last week, the Australian Workers' Union called for nuclear power in Queensland. So the Premier is a member of that union. So does that mean that we're going to have a reactor here in Mackay? Now, now we haven't played those silly games, but th there's one. I, I note one of uh, their senior chairs is a member of the CFMEU. It wasn't far from here that workers were told that bad things would happen to their family because they wouldn't go on strike by the CFMEU. Is that, is that front bencher? Is that, is that chair of the committee? Is, is he going to resign on the back of that? Look, this is silly. Um, you, can have, you can be a member of a union or a representative body, and that doesn't mean you share all their views. Uh, Ros Bates has been at the front line of asking people to get vaccinated. Do you know why? Because we are dead last in the race. We're last. And if the state government's best way to convince people to get vaccinated is to play silly games, and if the state way, state's only solution to a health crisis is to try and play silly political games. That, that's a real sad day for this community. It's a sad day for Queensland. Get on with your job. Give people confidence to go and get vaccinated. We have. I've been in Yarrabah. John Paul Angbrook was there yesterday. I've lost count on the amount of times that Dale's you know, done press releases from here telling people to get vaccinated in small communities. The government's been a little bit late to the party and we're not going to let them off the hook because Queenslanders deserve the confidence to go and get vaccinated. Well, um, George has got his views, I've got mine. Go and get vaccinated because if you believe in small and family business owner at the end of the street and the person they employ, if you believe in your elderly neighbour being able to have a life that's fulfilled in 2022 where they're not scared, if you believe in your loved one interstate who you want to wrap your arms around, go and get vaccinated. And above all, do your own research, have a look, go and talk to a health professional, and you'll come to the conclusion that the best thing for you and your family is to get vaccinated. George Grishenson has been, uh, it's been said that he has added to the uh, vaccination confusion. How do you address that? Uh, any, uh, any mixed message adds to the confusion, as did the issue in Queensland when 
the Premier found every single excuse not to be vaccinated at the start of the pandemic. And we've got to call that for what it is. I wrote to the Premier in February. I didn't make a big song and dance about it. I just said, you and I should get vaccinated together. I thought that would have sent a strong message. Instead, not only was that offer not accepted, we then had this silly games of excuses that was every reason for the Premier not to get AstraZeneca. And that completely set us back. It's one of the reasons we're at the back of the pack. That and the fact that we've always had changing goalposts and things moving around, that's why we're at the back of the pack. I don't know if you remember, but there was, she needed to get the flu jab instead of the COVID jab. That's completely against any advice I've seen. Then we had the vicious dog bit her, which then led to a tetanus shot needing to happen first. And then there was the trip to Tokyo. It was a pretty, pretty good merry-go-round of excuses. And in the end, all it did is people felt less confident about getting vaccinated. So please, to the Premier and the Ministers, just give people confidence. Give them a pathway out of the pandemic. But that pathway has to be about hope, not fear. It's got to be about hope and what it means for Queensland, what it means for you, what it means for your family. We are bigger and better than a disease. A disease isn't going to define this state. This state in a post-COVID world is going to do better than anywhere. We've got so much to offer. Natural assets, agriculture, tourism, mining, southeast that's just primed for amazing things. A regional Queensland with the most unique offering you'll ever find. Cities like this one, it's got mining, and tourism and agriculture, you've got it all. But we've got to choose hope over fear and the constant scare campaigns and the silly press releases trying to deflect attention, that does nothing for anyone. Just grow up and govern. Yeah. Yeah. Well, something like this will ensure that we get action. And I want to give a shout out to a few people. Uh, one is Beryl Crosby, who um, early on in the process um, was a, a, an ear for many of the people who you'll hear from today. Uh, the other is Ros Bates. And the, the campaign that has been run to give people a voice is only coming about because it's the only way we get action. And Ros can talk a little bit about some of the specifics of what we've seen in the last seven days. But make no mistake, uh, none of that would be happening if this wasn't rolling out behind us. If these brave people, and they are the heroes of the Queensland health crisis, many of them have had their lives turned upside down. And we've heard from them across the state. And this is a forum that will give them a voice and will continue to run them. Ros? And Ros might also tell you to get vaccinated for the 98th time. Uh, with regards to the uh, inquiry, we haven't seen the terms of reference yet. Um, we are a little concerned that um, it's Queensland Health judging Queensland Health. Uh, we saw that with the uh, Caboolture inquiry. Uh, we also don't know the time frame as uh, how far back they're actually looking to see um, uh, where the patients have been harmed. We need to make sure that people aren't operating outside their scope of practice and we need to make sure, more importantly, that if, if patients are harmed, that they are being listened to and if they haven't been listened to by the HHS, today is a perfect opportunity uh, for those patients to actually come forward and tell their stories. We also need to make sure that whistleblowers are protected um, and Beryl Crosby um, certainly has done an amazing job in the past. We know that she was the whistleblower uh, with Patel in Bundaberg, so she has a great amount of experience. Uh, patients have been going to either Beryl or to the opposition office, and we need as many people to speak out because it may not just be um, one area um, in the um, hospital, it may not just be the hospital, it might actually be other hospitals in the districts, such as Dale has referred to. With regards vaccinations, get vaccinated. I am a nurse. I was vaccinated before the Premier. I was vaccinated before the Health Minister. I talk about it publicly. I talk about it privately. My entire family are vaccinated. Get vaccinated and get vaccinated today so that we can make sure that our loved ones are looked after and to give hope over fear. Make sure that we can open those borders at Christmas time, wrap your arms around your families like mine that I haven't seen for 15 months.
I think what we need to see, and Dale's talked about that already, is an increase in rural generalists. Rural generalists are able to, um, to do obstetrics, they're also able to do anaesthetics. So, um, you know, in an emergency C section at Proserpine, for instance, the theatre staff would be set up to, uh, to be able to do that um, in an emergency. But we need to make sure that we've got the services out there um, so that not everybody is funnelled into Mackay Base Hospital. We also need to make sure that the culture is improved. Um, particularly in that midwifery unit because apparently the nurses uh, are not feeling valued um, and that's a big problem with Queensland Health across the state is the poor culture and that's something that we want to see improved. David? Oh, sorry. You mentioned the terms of reference in the review. What's an ideal design frame or how long should this take? Well, we saw with the Caboolture terms of reference that they only went back 12 months. That meant that most of the patients who actually complained to us um, were outside of uh, those terms of reference. You need to make sure that they're broad enough um, and that if people are coming forward, it shouldn't matter which date. If there is a problem with a particular um, provider, a particular surgeon, for instance, then that's what the... Um, the health ombudsman was set up to do, to pick up patterns of rogue behaviour so that we didn't see another Patel. So they need to be um, broadened for um, you know, at least a couple of years, which is what they, we forced them to do with um, Caboolture. Um, but if there are outliers, then um, those people should be heard. In fact, everybody who has had a bad experience and has had surgical complications needs to be listened to. It doesn't matter whether it's obstetrics or any other form of surgery. Should there be greater checks or backgrounding on staff being hired across the Look, certainly um, accreditation is a process um, that uh, is done by the medical director and the, um, and the hospital, the board, um, so they usually have pretty stringent um, processes. We are not um, saying at this stage that someone's operating outside their scope of practice, um, but certainly any uh, problems that uh, have occurred where there's been surgical complications shouldn't be hidden, um, they should be um, investigated, and so the patient actually gets closure one way or the other. Thank you. Yep. Yep. Well, I would have liked to have seen that occur earlier, but hey, better late than never. Um, but I've got to call a couple of things, and the first is that the undermining of the vaccine in Queensland came about because of mixed messages. And the mad scramble that we're seeing is only going to work if people see a pathway out of the pandemic that's about hope over fear. That, that to me is at its most simple form. And uh, good governments bring people on the journey. Bad governments try to scare them into action. And um, there's been too much of that pandemic nonsense during all of this and not enough bringing people along and sharing information and treating people like grown-ups. Thanks very much.